All right, so if you've been with me a while, you know that we are on the unit exam for the CMA. We have already done these five lessons, and we're getting ready to do a unit exam on it. It's not super long. It's just four questions. So, I mean, it may take an hour, but I don't know. Who knows? Uh, this is the first time I've taken this, so you're taking it with me, and um, I don't know. I'm usually pretty good with CMAs, so this might be a really short video. All right, so here we go. If you need to review anything, then you need to go back and look at some of these previous videos on the CMA that we have done. We're going to keep taking this until we pass it, so let's see how we do. All right, and in which form of price determination does the realtor often just drive by and take photos that complete paperwork for the lender? This is the broker's price opinion. Steve is preparing a market analysis for the Joneses and selected three comparable properties. How many adjustments should Steve make to the Joneses property? Um... I don't know. I don't understand that question. How many adjustments should he make? Well, I mean, I guess he would make as many adjustments as he needs to make. I don't understand that question. This is kind of a tricky question. I'm probably going to get this one wrong because I have no idea. All right. Jane is a real estate licensee gathering information to help her seller determine a listing price. How could expired listings help her in this pro process? They illustrate the price at which the property won't sell. They help determine the price at which property is most likely to sell. How long it will take the property. They donate. The, it could be a competition, too. Let's, I don't know about that one. That's another tricky one. Okay, let's see. When you use a comparative market analysis to calculate a suggested listing price range, which of the following should you, which of the following actions should you take? All right, we we'll use from a range active, expired, and possibly pending. Using the prices of sold comparables, acting adjusted for a time limit. Uh, this is not correct. We don't use one mile radius. Calculate based on expired and pending. Um, You can use prices sold, but you also might be using things that are active. So I would say this one right here. Let's see how we did on this exam. All right, we passed it, and we got one wrong, and I bet I know which one it is. Yeah, this one right here, because this doesn't make any sense to me. All right, so only the comparable sales price is adjusted. If it is inferior, adjust upward. If it's superior, adjust downward. But right here, you're still making an adjustment, so I don't know why zero is correct. Now, you may have questions like this on the test that are completely don't make any sense, and they're kind of tricky. And This is going to be one of them, because down here, it's saying that you have to adjust it. Up here, it's saying you don't have any. So this one is, should be as needed. You should be able to make adjustments. But anyway, we're just going to go with it. We passed it. We're not going to complain. All right. So a good listing price. How expired listings helped her? Expired listings help you because they illustrate the price at which the property won't sell. So if you're going over price, you want to bring this information to your seller because they're going to try and get the most they can. They're going to try and get the most money they can. And if they want to price it too high, you want to show them that if they go too high, their property is not going to sell. So that is super important, by the way. Could also be other reasons why it won't sell. Could be because the people are not taking care of their house. Could be because they're not allowing people to come in and view the house when they need to, when people need to come in and view it. You got some people, in my experience as, real, as a realtor, that do not want to let people in the house at certain times. And this can prevent, prevent sa the sale of the house. You cannot be super picky when you want to let people in the house. You, if you want to sell, you're going to have to keep it up and you're going to have to keep it presentable as a seller. Okay, 
It's not the responsibility of the realtor to treat you like a child when you know that you need to keep your house up. You need to make your beds. You need to clean the dishes. You know, you can't have baby toys laying all over the floor. You, the dog has got to be in You got to be in control of the dogs or the animals in the house. You know, all these things help. It's not just, it's just not the price, but they're, they're talking about the price here, but there's other factors involved in selling a home and not necessarily the price is what I'm basically trying to say on that little rabbit hole thing there. All right. When you're doing a comparative market analysis, you use adjusted prices and you want to use active listings and not just sold comparables. You want to use expired listings and possibly pending listings that are getting ready to come up. All right. So anyway, I got to go get some water because I've been talking too much. So this is the end of this unit. And the next thing we're going to do is the listing presentation. That's going to be our next unit. So if you are following along on my real estate course here. The next thing we're going to talk about is the listing presentation. And this is going to be unit five. And we're going to do this in the next video. We're not going to do it on this one. I just wanted to show you what's coming up. So we have six lessons coming up if you're interested in following along. These are the things we're going to talk about. If you need help on any of these, that's what we're going to talk about. All right, thank you everybody. That's the end of this video.